friends. Hello people, this is Cyberpunk here on Friends, and today Shinja and Officer Dan are joining me in this interesting topic, which is uh, gaming accessories. So, I got my own list. I don't know if you got your list, Dan. Uh, I have a, I have a guideline. I'm just gonna go with the flow. I have one key thing I could talk about for a little while, but I'm just gonna. Flow. Okay. So. Yeah, I don't know if you did any research on it, Cyberpunk. Oh, I um, I have some few stuff here to say. Um, um, third parties and maybe uh, first party. So yeah. Um, so I want you to start, Shinja. Okay. Uh, well, one of the first few things I want to mention about it one of the weirder video game accessories. Uh, there's this accessory that it didn't come out, but it was going to um, a while ago. It was for the Sega Genesis called the Video Jukebox VJ. The Video Jukebox. Yeah. So basically what it allowed you to do is, uh, you know how uh, on uh, your car you'd have those uh, CD players that you could switch between CDs and whatnot? Like, it would flip between CDs for yeah. you? Uh -huh. You could just pop in your CDs or whatever and just choose which CD you wanted. Yeah. Well, that was basically this for the Sega Genesis. They had something yeah. like that for the Sega? Yep. <laughs> um, so... They had a lot of stuff with the Sega Genesis. Yeah, so you could, if you were lazy enough to not want to, you know, pull out a cartridge and put a new one in, you could just shove six into this and do that. <laughs> and you could also hook up another one to one of those uh, VG uh, what is it called? Mm -hmm. Video video jukebox. You could plug one video jukebox to another so you could actually get 36 games hooked up to your Sega Genesis. <laughs> but each one of these was going to cost $50. <laughs> so you'd be spending $300. Um, okay, so how many cart... So you're saying like you wedged all these cartridges in and it was able to switch... Two yeah, you could put up to six video game uh, cartridges. Six carts and one. But yeah. you could link them together and have a total up to 32? 36. 36, you said. Yeah. That's interesting yeah. because I was looking into this a little bit also, and uh, that, that dated back as far as the Atari. The Atari had something that sounds very similar that they called the ROM switcher. And I saw it. It was just like an old-style church piano organ, but with Atari cartridges jetting out of it. <laughs> I forget how many that went up to, but it was well over 10, yeah. I think. Well, the video jukebox never came out. Um, and it never came out? Nope, it never came out. I thought it was actually, it's a decent idea. Uh, it's actually not that big. Um, so, but it's $50. That's that's way too expensive. Uh-huh. I would have expected something like at least $20, maybe. Um <laughs> Because it does seem pretty nifty. It's like, oh, I, I just turn on, you know, my Sega Genesis and then select the one I want. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. For the lazy. Uh, shall I continue or does someone else want to share? Well, Sega is... I grew up with Nintendo, so um, Sega was just a little bit of what I'm weak on. Um well, it's actually the competition of, you know, Nintendo. So yeah, that's why I don't know as much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But a lot of these things, a lot of accessories didn't come from Sega or Nintendo. A lot of it was third party. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. a few of them were like, uh, you know, from Nintendo. I feel like the stupidest uh, accessory I've ever seen were the Wii, Wii remote... Uh, attachments just the hunks of plastic yeah yes they did absolutely nothing it's just a head of a golf club on it i mean you already had trouble with kids letting go of them and smashing oh, lights and dude. breaking televisions speaking about that there is um so there's this accessory for the wii it is a wii bowling ball <laughs> So, oh, yeah. So you put your <laughs> Wiimote inside this bowling ball. <laughs> and it's not that... It's, I think it's made out of plastic or whatever, but it's a, it's a bowling ball. 
Of course. And um, it has enough room for your Wii Motion Plus adapter in it, too. Mm. <laughs> but uh, you put your Wii Mote in there, you can push the buttons as normally, and it'll work. And uh, it's supposed to improve your Wii Bowling game. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, like taking your bowling to the next level except it doesn't work that way <laughs> pretty much it doesn't feel like a real thing no. um, a lot of uh, third parties um, from this kind they were really cheap and the reason why they were really cheap is it's because it, it was uh, made of a really cheap plastic like really bad uh it wasn't durable at all yeah um i re i remember um some third party controllers from the playstation 2 uh, and one. like like the the playstation 2 and one controllers weren't weren't terrible like i had a playstation 2 gamestop controller that i got for Those free are the worst <laughs> the worst the buttons weren't <laughs> bad it was the analog sticks they were horrible there, like the sensitivity was just horrible you'd have to like like you move it a certain distance before it actually start reading it and as soon as it did there was like no like it almost felt digital you know what i mean where yeah, it was just yeah. like oh it's already moving at this velocity it's, there's no there's no good sensitivity on it um so like playing like call of duty or battlefield uh was that was just like horrible um but Zyberpunk, you remember this. You'd come to my house, and I had a third-party PS3 controller. And <laughs> those were the worst, because those ones are, like, were wireless. Yeah. But they wouldn't sync uh, through Bluetooth. They would sync with a uh, wireless USB dongle. Yeah. Hmm. And that... You, the... couldn't, you couldn't disconnect it either. No, you, you couldn't... Yeah, I mean, you could unplug the dongle and whatnot, and that would disconnect it. But uh, you couldn't power off the PlayStation with it. You couldn't... Yeah. Uh, what else was there? Then you Switch. couldn't... I mean, don't you hold the home button to power it off? It wouldn't let you. So, okay, so did the home button even work? Yeah, the home button worked. The home button worked, but it wouldn't recognize it just... the input of holding it? No, it would recognize yeah, it, uh, but you it wouldn't give you the option to turn it off. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's it so was it, really stupid and dumb. It's not the controller; it's more like the PlayStation, because it knew it wasn't like a PS3 controller, I guess, or something. I don't know, or a legit PS3 controller, I should say. Um, but yeah, it was, but the worst part of it was that like since you know it's a wireless dongle. Um, for some reason, after a while, it just lost its range, <laughs> and so <laughs> Cyberpunky would be literally sitting like one, two inches away from the TV, or from the console, which was next to the TV, trying to play, and we were like playing Street Fighter and crap, and <laughs> like, you could not get that thing to work. So. No, these, these, uh third party accessories like the controllers and all that they were like 15 bucks or 10 bucks they were really really cheap uh if it was new i think it was like 20 bucks if it was mad cats it was like 25 bucks uh due to the mad cats thing uh mad cats uh today they're in a really deep shit <laughs> um yeah they're, they're in big trouble financially not only that, Dude, they, like, uh, really? did a lot of, like, what, copyright infringement stuff, didn't they? Oh, uh, yeah. They they got in a bit of a trouble. They also made their... They know they made a knockoff console of the Wii once. <laughs> yeah. Pro Jared <laughs> covered that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Mad Cats was my first experience with third-party stuff now i'm just under the impression like it's just cheap because they were looking to just undercut first party prices so parents would just look at it oh that's the same thing and it's cheaper this will do fine yep i'm that's pretty sure that was their whole happen. point was to just bank on that back in the day mm -hmm. 
he said that the fact is um, we 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 buy these type of of uh, controllers and they don't last as much as the original. Of course, they're, they're third party, but you know. This is just to to resolve at the moment. Back in the days, it was like, well, uh, I hope this uh, this controller lasts, but they they couldn't last at least five years less. Mm. It was it was shit. Um, the, these things like they they were, they were more of controllers. They were like memory cards. Um, what else? Uh, they were like. Uh, um, CD or DVD, uh, how do you call that? Holders. Uh, yeah, mm. like the 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 little books. Or yeah, whatever exactly. You call them, the yeah. Portfolios or portfolios. I don't, I don't know what yeah. you call them. You know what what we're talking about, right? The zip yes. up carrying cases. I just call them CD like, cases. Yeah. They also had uh, Game Boy Link cables, which I still have them right here. And I think that's the only, only thing that they did well. <laughs> Usually it Boy... was, like, first-party accessories, like, mm -hmm. were, were, like, their best. Um, you know, like, but even now, we still make fun of, like, first-party inventions and whatnot. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so. um, excuse me. Um, we'll have, uh, for example, the PlayStation, uh, the iToy came out. People didn't really make much fun about it when it came out, but the internet wasn't such a huge, huge thing back then. Yeah. Um, but you know, then Microsoft makes the Kinect, and uh, PlayStation makes the new PlayStation. What is it? I. I or yeah, I, I mean, didn't they always call the camera the I? The first camera was the I toy, but okay. when was the new one? I PlayStation. I don't Motion? know. I thought it was the I as well. PlayStation but Move. Just... This PlayStation Move. Well, the Moves, the PlayStation the, moves 3. the controllers, aren't they? I thought it's, you were just talking about the camera. Well, the controllers and the camera are all... Well, oh, okay. It's Move. Because the uh, controllers are, have their own name. A Move it's, camera. I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Anyway, people immediately made fun of the products. And I think it's mostly the design and the fact that it was... Adding the controllers, like, okay, we got the cameras, like, okay, they they need to compete with Microsoft's new Kinect, you know, and they can't yeah. just sell the same iToy. So they make a, a nicer, better camera, and then they're like, oh, you basically just gave us, you know, the Wii's nunchuck and Wiimote, mm -hmm. <laughs> but was blowing balls at the end. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then there's some cool good stuff like the the PlayStation TV that that is a very good first party uh uh accessory. I'm surprised it's not selling as well as it should be. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. mine like I know they originally go for more than 100 um but I got mine for around 20 bucks on Amazon and that thing is basically a PS Vita for your TV. Which is rad. It is amazing. <laughs> like, you can put in any PS Vita game that well, that does not have motion controls in it or uh, or requires a camera, and it will work. So, I can play Persona 4 Golden on it, Persona 4 Dancing All Night. Um, I can play... Uh, what other games are there? I can play Blaze Blue. Mm -hmm. Uh... I can't think of many other games that I actually play right now on my Vita. Didn't you but say you had a um, a Final Fantasy? I can play Vita? Final Fantasy X and X too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, you know, Persona 4 Golden's a big one. Yeah, because... I already told you. I already oh, okay, sorry, that. I didn't hear you mention that. I mean, that's the definitive version of that game. Yep, Persona 4 Golden is the best uh, version of Persona 4 you can get. And you can play it on your TV now with the PlayStation TV. Yes. Uh, and I only got mine for twenty dollars. The PS Vita is nearly two hundred, or actually, it's more than two hundred dollars. Yeah. So, that's a huge steal. Um, so, and then you can also you know stream your PlayStation Four to it. 
Yeah. And if you hack it, you can stream your PlayStation 3 to it. Oh, is that right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why it doesn't already do PlayStation 3 to it, because your PS Vita can do it, but whatever. Uh, yeah. So, um, there's also more uh, towards uh, something else from the iToy. There's there was uh, the con- the the connect, and there's there's a lot uh, to tell about the connect, and why it wasn't that successful uh, in the day. Um, basically, um, I have played with the connect. Um, you know, friends have it, and I play. Um, some dancing games, uh, some, you know, what Kinect has. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's some games that they're not very well. And it all depends on the game. And we also discussed this in the virtual reality. Uh, if these kinds of things don't have good games, they won't sell well. And if if the if this thing, like the Kinect, doesn't work accurately like fast pacing and it can't uh, read my moves that that well then it's it's gonna be a very very bad problem and that is one of the um uh the bad things that are, that are happening today also and there's there's a there is a problematic with with uh with first parties because they're made from actually Microsoft or Sony and they just do it because they just I don't know I don't know if they're looking for the money or people having fun with their family because all these camera and motion things are just like more like family playing and more like multiplayer like it's kind of like the Wii thing well, and it yeah, go on. I'll hold on to my point. Yeah, go ahead. Well, as you say, uh, there's a few advantages for them releasing uh, an accessory from their end rather than someone else doing it. Uh, yeah. When they release an accessory, usually you know that there'll be um, compatibility with the software of the actual console. So, you know... Uh, Sony and Microsoft both release PlayStation TV, they'll re- or you know their versions of that, or they'll release the 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 cameras and the motion controls and whatnot, um, or even headphones and stuff like that. And you know that your console will be updated so that it will work well with that. So one, you'll know it'll actually work, and two, uh, it artificially extends the life of your console. Um, what this does is, you know, it'll keep up, um, its value in the market for a while. Like, you know, if you, if you were just to leave the PS4 and the X-Bone, uh, alone for a while, um, people would sort of stop talking about it after a while, but, uh, make up a new accessory for it that you can convince people to buy and get in their house. Not only do you convince them to get the accessory, but you might ask, actually convince them to buy a console as well. So it yeah. extends its life and and uh, and usefulness in general. So people are more, uh, you know, inclined to buying it. But because it's simply just to extend its shelf life and not actually, you know, like kind of, you know, improve things really, um, developers. Uh, usually, even even like the same companies that make it, so like the Sony developers from Sony and third party developers elsewhere, uh, they won't make a lot of video games for it. Which is why you made the great example that Connect has dancing games, and that's really all it's good for right now. Yeah, dancing games. That's all they have, and then they have like Connectimals and some other crap. Um, like and, Sonic Riders. Yeah. <laughs> and then I don't know. I don't know what else uh, PlayStation has. 
I I don't even know of any of uh, PlayStation's like m- move titles really. Um, like the only thing that comes to mind is like I think I think you can play Killzone was it? Uh, yeah, that's uh, about it. Th- there's uh, some uh, shooter games for the PlayStation Move. Yeah. Uh, just like that, uh, Killzone. There's also baseball games with the PlayStation Move. Bec- uh, I I don't know why, but it just you know it's just oh let's do this and let's see and let's try. And after uh, heavy heavy after heavy rain launched for the PlayStation Three, uh, Move support was patched in after it had launched, so you could play through that whole interactive adventure with the Move controllers. That is sort of interesting i guess mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. not much you can like that whole game is really kind of like just mostly cinematic it's there's true but i mean it had intuitive events. controls like if you're turning a doorknob i don't know they like had you spin the stick a specific way to do yeah. that <laughs> so i mean you're not into move controls and that is a bit more immersive i suppose yeah you can i suppose that. i mean i guess that'd be pretty cool is until dawn until Dawn would actually be a pretty uh, great game to have. Yeah, I don't know what I has sh- move support anymore. It's, especially with, uh, you know, Until Dawn had the whole, like, don't move feature. That'd be That's pretty true. cool with the, yes. the actual PlayStation move. Yeah. Control. So I don't know if they ported that in or not. I don't know. Anyway, my other point was going to be the price for all of this for an accessory that um, didn't even have a lot of stuff coming out for it. It was, it was very high. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mm. know, it'd be it'd be almost buying another console sometimes. Like, yeah, you know, a, a lot yeah. of case with older accessories, it was the price of the console, or even more so. Yep. Um, <laughs> what comes mm. to mind is when I was looking through Sega related things and motion controls. Is I really my phone's dead, so I couldn't look up the name of this thing, but there was uh like a field sensor that you stood in the center of for the Sega Genesis and it had like laser the shooting Sega up. Activator. That's right, the Sega Activator. Thank you so very much. The Sega Activator made it act like you put your copy of Mortal Kombat into your Sega and like you were actually throwing the punches and kicking and uh, I yep. believe that just it was like kind of octagon shaped, I think. It was like an octagon and uh, infrared lasers shot out of it. That's the right. Ends, so you were standing inside of it. Um, so it's kind of like a virtual reality sort of. But each of the sides represented a button on Something the controller. Like so it wasn't you actually like throwing a, a kick and then like Scorpion was going to throw the kick too. Yeah. No, so it like just... you'd be kicking backwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's how you do it. So it was it was very inconvenient. It in all boils down to if you can do it faster on a controller, what do you need this for? It was supposed to be like virtual reality, basically. That's the mm-hmm. feeling it's supposed to give you. Yeah. Um, and it was eighty dollars. Uh, <laughs> that was eighty dollars. Yep, eighty dollars. <laughs> uh, very big and practical. It took a while to set up. Another thing that came out uh, during that era, this was for the NES and SNES was the Aura Interactor. This was a virtual reality sound backpack sort of thing. Sound backpack. Yeah. So you would... It, it was basically like having a subwoofer attached to your back. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> funny because somebody invented something like that not all that long ago. Yeah. So you, have, some times. <laughs> so you have a, a thing that produces major bass on your <laughs> back. And... Um, it was uh, basically, you know, just to give you that feeling of more being more immersed in the in the game, uh, virtual reality, uh, and actually most people don't mind it nowadays, because uh, it would actually work pretty well nowadays. And I guess they were kind of targeting blind people too, because they mm-hmm. could feel the vibrations. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, blind people yeah. playing your game. Yeah, but <laughs> or no, I'm sorry, not blind people, <laughs> deaf people. Deaf people playing. Your yeah. Game. I don't know why yeah. I said blind. Um, but uh, the biggest reason it didn't sell well was uh, it. this came out during the time of NES and SNES. So yes. you yeah. didn't really have like games that you really wanted to be that immersed in the, 
<laughs> the audio is like there was nothing really that would be like whoa this sounds amazing coming out of this gigantic speaker <laughs> out of my i back. don't think i've ever experienced a super nintendo game making me feel the bass drop <laughs> <laughs> basically that's so interesting that you bring up a backpack with a subwoofer on it because that just triggered my memory for something i saw a few years back it was a kickstarter project or something this guy basically invented a rumble pack for that was a vest essentially oh and had and had a subwoofer on your back so you felt it but it was force feedback so he was playing like a shooter or something if he gets shot in the shoulder it'd activate like rumble or like some kind of shake that made you feel the force of you oh, wow. getting shot in that specific spot i completely had forgotten about that i wonder what's going on with that thing well i i wouldn't doubt that it probably does exist nowadays but that would or not exist like it's probably still being funded or because it seems like a decent enough idea. I, I think the speaker on your back is kind of neat. Yeah. In some ways. Um, but it's probably like... I don't know, it's tough for developers to do that. Because then, you know, like... Existing games probably won't be able to work with it. Mm -hmm. um, especially with stuff like that where it's like... Oh, you got shot somewhere specific. It needs to work there, you know. So the game needs to be able to like send that information out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, there's another uh, impractical uh, device. Now this thing I was gonna I bring up too. Coincidentally, I wish I saw I, the picture on your phone. And yeah, I, was I saw. I, I I wish I could show you the picture, Cyberpunk, because this <laughs> is uh, this is called the Alpha Grip AG5. PC gaming and text entry controller. It is a remote control that is supposed to substitute your keyboard and mouse. So it's supposed to make it easier to play video games than anything else on your computer. It has 42, 42 keys. 42 buttons. Yeah, 42 buttons. 42 buttons. All over them. What the hell? <laughs> so, <laughs> why, why, would, why would they even do such a complex thing? And you are able to hold a like a sequence of these buttons, and you would be able to completely type. Yeah, like you're supposed to like some like keys are technically like one button. So if like with one finger you like move it in a certain way, like you could hit like four or three keys at the same time, and so um, it's all over the controller, like literally on th on the back of it, on the yes. front. Like there's forty two buttons. There's buttons everywhere. And the funny thing is, six of them are shift keys. Yes. <laughs> and those shift keys all do the same thing. It's just shift, shift yeah. in six different spots. Wow. So. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that thing. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, it, it gets ridiculous sometimes with these... Uh, different accessories and whatnot indeed and uh th there's one thing that you mentioned earlier that um about the the prices and whatnot and and yeah it, it says some of these are kind of way way too expensive for the for the shit that they are mm -hmm. um yeah. you know that sometimes we uh we we also buy these things, and they they're they're pretty cool. Um, like some of them, they they also have a uh, um, transparent uh, controller or transparent uh, anything. Yeah, um, I like that stuff. Yeah, I really like that stuff because they they sometimes have lights. Um, they sometimes have uh, glow. you can see what's inside and glow. Yeah, um, if if they have a vibration thing, you can see the things spinning. You can see around. the rumble motors. Spin. Yes, yes, and you know the, those things are pretty expensive because they they actually you can see through them, and uh, and you know it's it. For me, it's really cool. I mean, I had that experience uh, with one controller, but it didn't last that long. Mm. Uh, I think it was a PlayStation 2 because I think uh, someone gave it to me. You know, it, it was second-handed, but, you know, I, 
It was pretty cool at the moment, but then it died. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's... But yeah, it's 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 pretty cool that these uh, third parties, um, they do have their their pros and uh, you know, getting off the the cons. You know, this is this is one of the uh, the coolest thing that they actually have, and they're still doing it. Um, I think they still uh, with the. Uh, more like the Xbox and the PlayStation 3. Um, I don't get them as much because GameStop is leaving soon, so they just went away. Um, I haven't gone to Walmart or Best Buy to check them out. Walmart's but... leaving too. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it, it is. I it wasn't is. aware of that. Uh, Walmart's leaving. Um... That's another topic. How are, uh, <laughs> How are you supposed to say? How are you supposed to say? That's the, the that's topic the of games. How are you supposed to save? You can't save anything. Uh-huh. Anyway, so, we're not a, a news station. So there, there's also in, there's also headsets that are really, really cool. And there's some headsets that are really, really bad. Um, yeah. I bought one Bluetooth, which it wasn't like a uh, gaming a uh, Bluetooth uh, device. I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> and it only lasted like five months. Uh, not only that, <laughs> dude, like, it that for some reason... Okay, so he got this third-party Bluetooth headset, right? At the same time, he also got a third-party PlayStation 3 controller. Oh, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> the third-party PlayStation 3 controller was actually pretty good. It connected was via Bluetooth and it worked just like any other PlayStation Three controller. Okay. It was, that was the I bought it for him. That was the best PlayStation Three con- knockoff PlayStation Three controller we could find. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I tried getting some from the same seller and they did not come out as good as that one. Interesting. Uh, like, it was so weird. Um, but uh, but then he got that headset for some reason. That headset and that controller did not play well together. <laughs> they would yeah. not like you could not have, have both of them it, connected. Yeah, I had to keep it connected with the USB, and the USB cable was so short. <laughs> I have to be like really close to the damn TV, like I was in PlayStation Two. Like, oh my gosh! Like maybe can't. even less. Yes, it's it's less because. The, I think the the USB cable was like, uh, it was probably like, like six feet. Yeah, six feet, really, really short, really bad, really bad. And yeah, this Bluetooth, I I bought it like for two or three dollars, right? <laughs> it was really cheap, <laughs> so it's not fully recommended. Um. <laughs> There's, there's, uh, the memory cards from the PlayStation 2, they were really good. Um, I still have one from Mad Cats. And that, I think that's one of the strongest thing that Mad Cats have done besides the link cables from the Game Boy. Uh, the, the well, link There's cab- not much to mess up there, really. Yeah, because... Basically, the link cables that I have for the Game Boys, they still work. Uh, they're really strong. They they look that like they're really good wired cables, like really uh, like high quality. Um, there's also some. I remember from Game Boy Color. Uh, I had a lot of accessories for that one. Uh, I had a magnifying glass for for the Game Boy Color. <laughs> yeah. I had I had yeah. a light for the Game Boy Color. Those lights that you could bend and those worm uh, lights were this a, like swirly. <laughs> yes, yeah, that maybe one. a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I had one of those too for my Game Boy Color, man. Just and one was a full I, cyborg. <laughs> the astronaut yes. Game Boy Color. <laughs> yes. And I think I had some. Well, the 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 rechargeable batteries that were like energizer, so that that wasn't included. There were there was other ah oh, the yeah the 
that was one of the things that I couldn't understand from the Game Boy Color to the Game Boy Advance SP. They had the actual import for the the headphones. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you, you didn't, like, on the Game Boy Advance SP, SP specifically, yeah. they, they took away the audio jack, and so yeah. you would have to, I think it was the charging port, or or yeah. was it the link cable port? I had something that did the charge or the link cable, it was one or the other. You, you'd plug it in there, and from there you'd get a headphone jack. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah I remember, I had that one too, it was like a little mini cable and it didn't last that well i i never got that yeah i I had one that pumped out wireless oh really for my sp yes that's pretty cool headphones were really uncomfortable though (laughs) (laughs) oh wait were were, were they like specific headphones yeah there were specific headphones to okay that's next to it um it's still pretty cool that it's wireless but yeah I liked it, but imagine just headphones, like, full size, except shrink that in half, and it didn't have a headband at all. It just hung off your ears, and that's all it was. Oh, okay. So, uh, the HTC VR. Um, That's in a few days, right? Uh, it's, it's gonna come, I think it's, uh... I, I was, I was it under a, the impression that it was really soon. It's probably like this week or the next. Yeah. Um, so it's going to bring some accessories with it. And just because of the price that it has. And for me... Um, Do you know what price it is at right now? 799 Holy crap. 800 right? It's 800 bucks, bro. Yeah. Whew. <sighs> That and is, uh... we we talk about this in in our first first podcast about the VR generation and this is going out of hand. Like if you don't bring anything else, just besides the VR, it, you won't sell well. Um, you have to bring some accessories with it, some uh, uh, first party uh, controller or something. We, they're they're doing it. They. Uh, they're gonna sell you the 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 VR with some controller, with some games, with some something else. The problem is that uh, the HTC is is for the PC, and yeah, you you have to you have to modify your PC to be compatible with this shit, and that's that's a problem for. Uh, um, for for the buyers for the for the people who are going to how like it's a problem for me. I mean, my computer is starting to get dated in its hardware, sure. But for me to run the HTC Vive, I've got to upgrade both the processor and the video card. Oh, really? It's a few gener the video card's a few generations behind. And so is the processor. It's still very comparable. It's but it won't do like. You got to have higher end stuff to be able to run these VR headsets. Yes. And that that including the pieces or the hardware that you have to replace on your PC that might be like 100 bucks or 200 bucks from that. Well, in my case, I the, think it's 300 or 400 for me for both. Exactly. Of exactly the, the point. processor and video but, card, yeah. Like basically, you have to spend like one thousand and something dollars for the whole PC. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right <laughs> to get the full experience. You might get it for under a thousand, but that's pretty much it. Well, you're spending eight hundred dollars for that. That's not. That's excluding tax. If you know if they somehow uh, yeah. charge yeah. that, um, or even shipping and handling fees. And exactly. Then, yeah, it's, it's it's gonna be expensive, basically. Yeah, and uh, at least they're gonna going to bring some first party accessories, uh, some, you know, some controllers, you know, um, which that's good because um, people have been asking like, is that it? Are you going to give us just this uh, VR thing? And 
no games, no that, and they they actually going to give you something with it. And I I think in that part it's good, but it I think it's really overpriced because if the things that are included with the VR are not as good in product or durable like we just said earlier. Well, you're you're spending eight hundred bucks for something that it won't be durable, and that that's one of the 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 cases right now that it I'm gonna be spending money on something that it won't last. So the same thing happened with uh, third party and uh, and these things that are kind of uh, really cheap, not as priced, cheap as cheap plastic, cheap metal, like, mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't last that long as Holy. we we need it to last, because we, we buy something, and it, it costs a lot, and we can't, we can't get what we want, but we, and that's, that's one of the, the problems today, well, actually, with first party and third party. I was gonna say something, I just remembered something that kind of, it kind of just blew my mind a little bit, but, um, Okay, so first of all, I this what I'm about to say does not mean I endorse the HTC product in any way. Uh, but I actually just remember it. I know the guy that's actually heading this project, and okay, and works for HTC. Okay. <laughs> I actually met him like a year. Is it a year? A year and a half ago? It's nearly two years since I met him. Mm. Yeah, I've met this guy, and I pers I personally know him. And uh, from what he told me, like, this, this was like two years ago. From what he told me, they were working on this, and they actually weren't going to sell it in, to the market, but I guess they changed their mind. Um, okay. Yeah, but you did know, they it, just decide to get into a race with Oculus? This is like a space race. Like thing? I was talking to him about it, and he's like, "Oh, well, no, we're not planning on doing virtual reality and whatnot." And I guess they just shift gears. Yeah, they were just uh, planning on it being like actual, like, like kind of like a TV plaster TV. Well, that might have maybe came in. Maybe that's when Valve kind of jumped in and said they were interested. Maybe they shifted focus then or something. Maybe. But I, I do know the guy. Hey, from what he was telling me on what they were planning, I can guarantee to you in a certain way um, that it probably... Well, I don't want to say I guarantee, but I can most likely say that it will be very durable in all of his aspects. Mm -hmm. From what he was telling me of how it's going to be like. And it does not surprise me that that is the price anymore, because that's they were aiming for a lot higher, actually. Yeah. Damn. So. Yes, because they want to get their money back, and you know it's it's a really piece of hardware, and I get it. Well, I originally really they it. weren't they they weren't even planning it like they were planning it for like military use. That's what this guy's like focused on. Yeah, basically. Ever since the game start, uh, the the first thing of you know the about the game gaming industry, the how gaming started was like it was just a controller from from a war. It was that uh, joystick to to move some type of missile or something. I don't remember if it was in World War World. War Two or the was, Vietnam one. That was probably after World War Two. Like, yeah, like there was so much like, it's it's weird to say this, but thanks to war, there's been so much, uh, uh so many advancements in technology. Uh, yeah, it, it has. <laughs> and the the military funds so much research right now that it's it's not surprising to hear something like, oh yeah, this we have this here because the army was actually planning on using it for something else, but we've adapted it to this. Even the internet was originally an invention of the army. Exactly the point. <laughs> and uh, I think we... 
it's it's not like um I mean that the gaming because of the gaming uh there's there's more controversies and whatnot. Uh you know, because of the military and wars and, and all of that we have the games, we have this type of technology, we have this uh accessories and, and whatnot. So um I was going to mention something uh from a third party also first party from DDR and the DDR mat which I'm specifically going uh, so I have two of them yeah I, I have two of them and I had fun with them back in the days but they don't last as long as I want it to yeah uh, I, have a, I have one DDR mat that did not last very long. One of the buttons is whacked. Yeah, eh, I don't. I don't know. I think it was one of Mad Cats again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, wait, was it the one that connected to all three? It was like Xbox. Yeah, three, the Xbox. Um, I picked uh, up one of those for like three bucks at a garage sale. Never used it though. Oh, uh, dude. Um, it's a huge. Speaking about dance mats, so we mentioned earlier I got a PlayStation TV. What we haven't mentioned is for my Vita, around the same time, I bought also Persona 4 Dancing All Night. And yeah. Dancing All Night uh, is basically like Dance Dance Revolution, except it's got six directions, basically. Um, okay. You know, it's got it, it uses up, left, down, and triangle, circle, X. So you got like a circle shape. And I was like, man, like I can put this in my PS Vita or in my PS TV, and I can play it with my, uh, you know, my PlayStation Three or PlayStation Four controller. I can play it with either controllers. It would be so cool if I actually got a dance mat that had the buttons laid out. <laughs> Just like they are on the, uh -huh. you know, on the on the screen. Um, cause it would work. It, it like, you could actually dance with it. Um, and are you I, sure? Yeah. All you need to hook up to, uh, the only thing you need for uh, a controller to work with is a PlayStation TV box is it for it to be USB. So, if someone were to actually invent a dance mat, like that, that that has to exist. I can't find it anywhere. You you don't think that there's a USB dance mat? I, I, but no, but yeah, I will, what was everything. like you know up left up left down triangle circle X. Okay. Like just those six buttons in a circle form because I've seen, I've seen USB dance mats with the four directions, and, and then they have you know they have all four, uh, buttons like the square circle triangle next mm -hmm. I've, mm -hmm. I've seen them but the problem with those are is that you know the the d-pad buttons are in a cross shape and then the other the other buttons are around it in like the spaces left and the four diagonal corners yeah so if i were to use one of those to play that game it'd be really weird it would feel unnatural you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it needs to be a, like specifically for, dancing all night. Um, and I'm sure it's not hard to make one. But, uh, like I mean, if someone were to decide to like actually make that project, um, but it probably wouldn't sell as much because, you would have to have a PlayStation TV, the game, and then you know you need to get the dance mat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just want I just want Atlas to just make the game for PS3 or PS4 <laughs> and have a dance mat with it. I love that game, dude. I got platinum on it. I got a platinum trophy. I am in love with that game right now. <laughs> just buy one PC. <laughs> What'd you say? Or what were you gonna say? Now, everyone can uh fall, fell in love with. Persona. <laughs> yeah. It's a dancing okay. game, man. Yeah. 
So what else? What else we have before we finish this podcast? Oh, um, I had something I was going to bring up. A number of different items, really. I mean, I think we can all agree, besides controllers, that the first real peripheral video game accessory that people had in their household was the zapper that came with the original Nintendo NES system. Duck Hunt is really a cult classic for it's so simple and there's not much to it but everybody ended up getting getting duck hunt yeah, anyone was an nes yeah yeah and um the only way that you could really play duck hunt was with a crt television and not an L- lcd display the reasoning for that being is because of input lag between a controller and an lcd display because you see if you're playing on an original NES, that's an analog signal. And your television, these newer flat panel LCDs, LEDs, and whatever, that is a digital display. So the time that the guts of the inside of the TV has to convert, oh, he pulled the trigger on the controller, is slower because it has to convert that analog signal into a digital one. So Duck Hunt doesn't, doesn't work. Because Duck Hunt brings up the black screen on the very first frame of animation when you click the button. And so it pulls and looks for that white box that also shows up with the duck. I want to say it's just a frame later. And it's all too late if you're doing it from that. So, But it still stuck out so much. And I think it's neat that uh, when Duck Hunt Dog was announced as a playable character for Super Smash Brothers that they re-released Duck Hunt to the Nintendo eShop for it to work with a Wii remote and kind of mm. have a cursor style thing. Yeah, that actually and it doesn't use the same method I'm guessing. It, it's probably just an yeah, actual like, probably, sensor bar. Yeah, I bet you it just uses it. That's the impression I had when I looked at it. I really would like to get it and check it out because it's just kind of a fun new way to play Duck Hunt now that's just a um, a light sensor or a photodiode, and that's the only real intricate part of an NES zapper. So yeah. it's just looking for that white square when you're pointing it at a television screen to be able to pull. If it sees black, then it, it will read it as a miss. miss. But yeah. if you if it sees white, that counts as a hit, and so that registers it as a hit for the game. So. Um, Older school people would know if you're playing Duck Hunt, the CRT, you can just instantly win by pointing your NES zapper into a light source like a lamp. And it's yeah. always constantly pulling white for that light sensor. Yeah. So you you won't even be aiming at the screen. You're just clicking at mm-hmm. the lamp, killing <laughs> killing ducks perfectly. Yep. Wow. So uh, besides, uh, besides Duck Hunt, I think this is really neat. And so I've been looking forward to to talk about this is um and this goes back further than i thought but starting with the nintendo ds exclusively in japan was a tv tuner a television tuner for you to be able to watch television on your nintendo ds it just looked like a couple of neat little antennas it was an accessory that even goes inside the game's card slot and jets out from that <laughs> And this little thing with antennas coming out. Wow. There was a broadcast service specific to that TV tuner. And it had your menus for the TV on the bottom screen. So you're even using the bottom touch screen to choose between different channels. And seeing different information about the different channels. And being able to watch TV on your DS. That's like really neat. It's Mm. exclusive... It was exclusive to Japan because there was no such service here in the United States. And it turns out, looking at that, that there were television tuners for different handhelds even before that, I didn't realize, that just wouldn't work today because they're analog. Because in 2008, 2009, all broadcasters had to, big, huge broadcasters had to switch over to a digital signal, so they weren't going to work. But there were television tuners for the Game Boy Advance, even. And there's a few others that I might be forgetting, but my favorite 
<laughs> because I don't know much about Sega. My favorite is for <laughs> the Sega Game Gear. The Sega Game Gear had oh my. a television <laughs> tuner, and it had this big metallic antenna that <laughs> does this. And I didn't have a Game Gear. I mean, I had people... I had one person around me who had one, and it was so common knowledge even then, and very infamous today, that that thing just ate batteries like nothing, and it ate so much more batteries when it had this <laughs> anal huge analog television tuner on the top that, you know, at first thought, I was thinking, oh, this... Is, this has just got to be for the most hardcore collectors because it's got to be worthless now because mm -hmm. just, there's no analog signal. So I was kind of curious as to see uh, see if um, you know there were ways you could convert it to, to a digital signal, maybe pick up digital channels. And that uh, I didn't dig super deep into it. I mean, I only came across modifications to where you could output your game gear to a television period so you know you'd have your game gear on the big screen but this i found really cool actually is it has an input on the top of it and i saw this video of a guy who plugged his xbox 360 into his Sega Game Gear, dude. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> he, he was playing his Xbox 360 on his Sega Game Gear with the Sega Game Gear television tuner. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and of course he had an AC plugged into the wall. And I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> and that justifies the purchase. Imagine. But why would you want to do that? <laughs> it's a poor... Yeah, the Sega Game Gear is kind of big... And unruly and everything, but it's, I mean, for Sega people, it's a Sega thing, and it's a Sega specific thing that's a television. I don't know what else you could plug into it, but you could do, this guy did a 360. How cool is it to have this portable television that you would hit, be able to fit in your big bulky pocket, maybe like a cargo <laughs> pocket, but that means. That you still have to plug in somewhere. <laughs> that means that you could just have. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tiny screen. You have but to, still, you have to carry around your Xbox 360 everywhere and have like a I mean, generator with you. It could still, yeah, you'd need to plug your 360 in, but you could, yeah. you could, you wouldn't have to plug if you only had one plug. You could still run it off batteries, dude. You could still run it off run batteries. Off, run, run, off, run your Xbox off batteries. <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? I don't believe you. I'm not saying run the Xbox off batteries. You could still run. The Game Gear. The, the one, the place where I saw it, the guy who mentioned it, uh, he made an interesting comment, though. He's like, imagine playing Animal Crossing with this. Your whole <laughs> objective is just kill Tom Nook. You must find Tom Nook and kill him. Everybody loves making the villagers so violent. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yes, that's the only thing I had to say about that. There's, it's inconvenient controller but hey it's pro probably yeah. enhances your gaming experience just a little bit <laughs> awesome so i think that will be it yeah cool you end there nice all right uh you know the, <laughs> the drill, the drill. <laughs> there's there's so many things nintendo wise i i could have brought up so i decided to just be outside the box a little bit and I'm really glad I I found out about the TV tuners. I uh, just so just cool. one more thing and this should be in the podcast also um just for you officer officer Dan and uh, Shinja uh, I'm going to I'm going to buy this book cuz uh it's it's especially for gamers. It's it's called Console Wars. Uh this is not as a fanboy thing. This is actually uh, Sega, Nintendo, and the battle that defined a generation. This is from Blake J. Harris. This is, you know, uh, a book from where Sega and Nintendo really actually had this rage battle. Rage a, battle. A real console war. This is like a real console war, not the shit that we have right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the real console war, like between these two big ass companies. So this is I'm going to buy this book, uh, maybe for next month. 
because I'm really interested in reading it even though I do not read that much but this is you know for my gaming career this is this, this is gonna this is gonna help yeah so yeah that battle's never really ended no <laughs> it's still going on but is it <laughs> I feel well, like it just, like, there was a clear victor, and Sega's just, is gone. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, they still there doing was... their party. <laughs> Come on, you can see beef about the Confederate flag today. How could you not believe that there's still a little bit of something between Sega and Nintendo? What? <laughs> Everyone knows that the conf- anyone who flies the Confederate flag is a racist. <laughs> And, like, there is no beef between them. Like, basically, uh, Sega is Nintendo's bitch right now. <laughs> well, they're off making their own, like, uh, at mobile applications or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. But it, they, it was a great competition, but there's nothing between them now. There was never a decided victory. It's like they just dropped out of the race. Yeah, it, it quite did. It, you know... Because of the money issue, man. Yeah. Yeah. They they took a huge blow with the Dreamcast, unfortunately. Yeah. And the Sega CD before it, really. I mean, that was yeah. the that was the ramp that sent them off into the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but Nintendo really did some ballsy move when when Nintendo wanted to get rid of Sega, Nintendo actually joined Sony to make the PlayStation Two. And to destroy Sega. And then GameCube came out. Well, they did the so, PlayStation yeah. 1 they were trying to make. Like, Nintendo was trying to make the PlayStation 1. And uh, there was disputes between the two yeah, of them. Yeah, but the idea was to take out Sega. the Sega. Yeah. Yes. So, it, it was right there on the PlayStation 2. PlayStation 1. So, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's PlayStation 1. Yeah. Because there's just some PlayStation 1 and some Nintendo uh, 64 thing, uh, you know, match thing. Yeah. But, yeah, they, they join forces to defeat Sega at some point. So, that Nintendo did some, uh, some backup over there to eliminate Sega from the marketing. All right, thank you for joining us once again for this conversation. This is Shinja. Hey guys, this is Officer Dan. Me and Shinja here have a gameplay channel called Karibo Kai Play. We have a really good time over there, so I encourage you to come on over and check out this great content that we're uploading all the time. Yeah, Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to CyberStation. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys later.